I'd like to call to order the October 7th, 2010 Board of County Commissioners meeting, and I'd like to uh, request that you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As you can see, we are missing two of our commissioners today. Commissioners Peterson and Lee Han are out of uh, the office on other business and won't be here. Uh, but we are carrying forward with the three that we have. And the first order of business we have today is very important. We're proclaiming October 2010 as Disability Employment Month in Clackamas County. And with us, we have Maureen Thompson, who is the Director of Community Solutions for Clackamas County. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you very much. Um, as you know, Community Solutions is your workforce agency that serves vulnerable and barriered populations and also operates your weatherization program. Social Services, also a division of Health, Housing, and Human Services, also serves people with disabilities. So I'm here also representing Brenda Durbin. We would like uh, you to approve October 2010 as Disability Employment Month in Clackamas County. Would you like me to read the proclamation? Thank you, yes. Whereas Community Solutions for Clackamas County and Clackamas County Social Services provide occupational skills training and job placement services for Clackamas County residents who have disabilities, and whereas Community Solutions for Clackamas County and Clackamas County Social Services staff promote public awareness that people have a disability as opposed to being defined by their disability. He or she has bipolar disorder, not he or she is bipolar. And whereas Community Solutions for Clackamas County is participating with other county and area human service providers in an anti-stigma campaign to better educate the public about the nature of disabilities, both psychiatric and physical. And whereas Community Solutions for Clackamas County seeks to enhance people with disabilities sense of being involved in the community through work and by promoting sustainable employment for people with disabilities. And whereas Community Solutions for Clackamas County is educating area employers about the opportunities and benefits of hiring from this untapped and underutilized labor pool. Now, therefore, the Clackamas County Board of County Commissioners do hereby proclaim October 2010 as Disability Employment Month in Clackamas County. Community Solutions for Clackamas County and Clackamas County Social Services encourage all county residents to participate in activities to promote awareness of the importance of creating employment opportunities for individuals who have a disability. Wonderful. Does the commission have any clarifying questions or comments? No. Well, this is really important work. I know that um, we care very much on the Board of County Commissioners about making sure that people with disabilities and people with mental illnesses um, are included in our community and have the opportunity to live fulfilling lives and, and work when they can and, uh, and be stable. So thank you for bringing this to our attention. Um, do, may I have a motion to approve the proclamation? Sure. Sure, Lanninger. I move we, we proclaim October 2010 as Disability Employment Month in Clackamas County. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Austin and seconded by Commissioner Bernard. 
Uh, is there any discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion passes. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for your continued support. Now we are at that time on our agenda when we have citizen communication on non-agenda items. And I see in the audience um, our friend and colleague, Christine Kaczynski. And uh, Ms. Kaczynski, would you like to come forward? And um, I believe that you wanted to offer some testimony. Great. So please, uh, after you've had a chance to sit down, state your name and address for the record, and then you'll have three minutes on the clock. I will try to get this done in three minutes. Thank you. Are you here in your capacity um, as a representative of the Hamlet? Because I believe you may then have five minutes. I'll no, explain. I will explain. OK. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. I'm Christine Kaczynski. I'm here today as a citizen. Last night, I went before the Oregon City Commission representing the board of the Hamlet of Beaver Creek as their corresponding secretary and co-speaker, and I delivered this letter from the Hamlet to the city. I have brought a copy for each of you today. I went before the commission regarding two land use applications located at 19896 Beaver Creek Road, which is at the intersection of Myers and Beaver Creek. This is a 9.59 acre parcel brought into the UGB in 1979 and annexed into the city in 2008. This is contiguous to the Beaver Creek Road concept plan. Basically what has happened is that Oregon City continues to not recognize the hamlet of Beaver Creek. This has been happening on a consistent basis for several years and I'm here to ask for your help. The Hamlet, um, I'm enclosing a copy of a notice of public hearing that was generated from Oregon City Community Development Planning. This notice is marked that it was mailed on July 16th of 2010 and describes the hearing of these two land use applications. The hearing took place on August 30th in front of Oregon City Planning Commission. However, at the August 30th uh, Planning Commission meeting, the commission approved both of these land use applications, sending them on to the city commission. The, I believe that the hearing notice that was intended for the hamlet of Beaver Creek was purposely held by the city of Oregon City. I've also enclosed in your letter in the back a postmark of September 3rd. Therefore, the Planning Commission approved these land use applications. August 30th, the Hamlet of Beaver Creek wasn't even notified until after September 3rd. Both city records and the agenda from the City Commission meeting of September 15th clearly show that these land use applications were brought before the City Commission to seek approval for zone change from the current zoning of FU10 to MUC1, which is multi-use corridor. Um, when Mayor Norris opened the meeting on September 15th to citizen comments, Christine Kaczynski, a member of the Hamlet of Beaver Creek, made comments to the commission and inquired why the Hamlet was not notified of the hearings in front of the Planning Commission on August 30th. Mrs. Kaczynski further commented that there are about 6,500 citizens in Beaver Creek who rely daily on Beaver Creek Road since this is virtually the only way in and out of Beaver Creek, and this is where development is planned. I further commented that this is contiguous to the Beaver Creek Road concept plan. Tony Conkle, the city planner, stated that the city had met their legal requirements and that notifying the hamlet was an afterthought. Ms. Kaczynski, I see that your three minutes is up. And I have so much more time. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm glad that you were able to present us with this. Um, letter Administrator Wheeler, can you uh, speak to the next steps that we'll take? Because we want to make sure we're responsive to your concerns because you're, you represent an important part of Clackamas County. And the we Hamlet's want to only been service. given um, seven days to respond. Um, yeah. and, and we can only respond to what was brought up to the Planning Commission, which was virtually nothing. So they really have been locked out. 
Okay, Administrator Wheeler. Yeah, my plan would be to communicate with the staff of Oregon City and get a, an official response from them. This is the first time I've heard about this, but there's quite a bit of material here and an interesting trail and record. So I'll make sure that we communicate and, and find out what their uh, sense of purpose on this is and what's happening next. And we'll be in touch with you as well to find out where this can go. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming in and, and offering this information to us today. Appreciate it. Do you know that if we might hear from you in just a few days, since we only have seven to work on? Well, I will. Uh, I'll start work. Well, we'll start work on it this afternoon, okay. and we'll have to see where it goes. Perhaps I, the two we, of you can touch base. We have a full uh, file of what okay. you uh, okay. worked up here, right? Right. Everything is yeah. in there, and um, you can reach me by email. Okay. I did send an email to Tony Conkle this morning asking for a specific date and time when our written testimony was due. I still have not heard from them. Well, thank you for coming to speak with us today, and, and we look forward to getting you some responsive information. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Is there anyone else who'd like to come forward for the citizen communication portion of our meeting? Seeing no one, I'll end that portion of the meeting. We have no discussion items today on the agenda, but we do have the consent agenda. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Chair, I move we approve the consent agenda. Second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Bernard and seconded by Commissioner Austin that we approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Oh, okay then. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion carries. Uh, we are now on to Commissioner Communication. Who would like to go first today? Huh? Commissioner Austin? Well, I don't have a lot, uh, but uh, just uh, uh, saying that I've been continuing to travel around and, and talk to uh, some of the businesses around the county, and I'm hearing that at least those that are in the traded sector, metalworking, uh, seem to be doing uh, a little bit better than, uh, say, uh, a year and a half, two years ago. They're beginning to see uh, more demand for their products, so that means they're hiring more people. I've tried to connect some of the businesses to uh, some of our veterans uh, programs, so that, and I think that's happening, so that they can be looking at uh, qualified veterans as well as others looking for jobs or training opportunities. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that we're seeing some progress. I know it's, it's tight. Uh, in a lot of other areas, uh, but uh, it's encouraging that we're up seeing a at least some, some uptick in the in at least those traded sectors. So, great, thank you, thank you. Commissioner Bernard. Um, I had a chance to meet with uh, Mayor Mike Clark uh, this week, as well as the city manager, and I actually, Mr. Wheeler, have a couple of things uh, we'd like to maybe look into. One is. Uh, We'll talk to you about their population projections. I'm, I'm going to try and set up a meeting with uh, Commissioner Lehan to talk about some of their proposals. Uh, the other is this uh, bridge replacement, which is actually one of the things in our packet today under consent agenda. They're concerned that the alternative road might be a bit steep for people with horse trailers and the uh, John and Mike have talked to the property owner I think it's um, of, of, of a forest road that they would recommend that we look at and they've sort of got some base permission from them so I think it's closed for about three months uh, when this bridge is replaced so they have some concerns about that uh, this week we've uh, so those are the two issues Great. And that, um, that would be City of Malala we're talking about? Yeah, City okay. of Malala. Uh, okay. Yeah, Malala. Okay. I also, uh, outside of those, I visited McLaren and Hillcrest. Uh, McLaren's a, a boys' uh, uh, facility, uh, and so is Hillcrest in Salem. And uh, I actually ran into somebody that I had ran into at Donald E. Long and had an opportunity to talk to who had been involved in, in gang issues. Uh, Hillcrest and uh, McLaren are both longer term uh, stay f uh, facilities. And uh, we had guides who uh, had been there a number of years, um, in, uh, probably wasting their youth away in a jail cell, basically. but. There is an amazing lot of work being done in those facilities. Uh, Hillcrest is um, a certified facility, so 
uh, kids graduate with a high school degree and can go on to college. You'd also be surprised to find out that some kids can be in these juvenile facilities as old as 24. Hmm. Uh, uh, I thought Hillcrest was a place I'd rather attend should I uh, have been a youth and gotten in trouble. Uh, McLaren is uh, obviously needs a lot of work, a lot of money, a, good, a lot of investment to really make that a, the facility that it really should be. Um, I, you know, I was impressed. Uh, we do a lot of work. We do send people there from uh, the, the Clackamas County. And uh, uh, I think that they're doing a great job working with them and their families to try and break the cycle. Uh, one of the things we're talking about is a youth re-entry council, which might address some of those kids uh, when they get out, how do they get back into school. For example, some of them are not allowed to go back to school. They have to find another school, alternative school that will allow them. Or how to, what kind of housing? I mean, should they go back to their home? Should they have some alternative foster care home, housing, which is something we don't provide and something we ought to start talking about? And uh, so how do they turn their lives around, get their high school or get their college degree um, you know, started? But I thought it was a, a valuable opportunity to really find out what's happening in, in the county and actually statewide. There's a number of facilities statewide um, that uh, all of them, all the kids go through Hillcrest and they're kind of assigned areas where uh, there's some expertise uh, to address uh, maybe their criminal activity, whether that's gang or uh, sexual assault or anything that uh, uh, so all throughout the state. But anyway, I, I think we're, we're doing a good job. We, there's obviously not enough money. And I think that the Measure 11 uh, law put some kids in jail that, uh, I don't know. I, I saw some kids who really had, uh, had, in my opinion, turned around, and they still had years to go. Uh, one particular kid, I think, had four more years to go and he was just finishing up his high school and uh, on to his college degree. And um, while I know that the kids we run into are not always honest with whom they are and whether they've been actually changed direction in their lives, uh, you could you could get the fe you could feel that something had happened in this young man and he still had four more years to go. And that's too bad that society's put him away for so long. Anyway. Thank you. I just, I just wanted to observe, uh, being along on that trip too, as well as uh, uh, Commissioner Lehan, I was really impressed by the level of staff caring and support, the mentoring that they do with those kids. You could just feel it. You could just as we walked around through the, some of the shop areas, through the through the high school, through. Uh, especially at uh, Hillcrest and uh, as well as McLaren. I mean, there's just the, the kids, I mean, they're in a tough situation, but they really have uh, great support. So uh, I'm still a little dismayed at how long some of those youngsters are still going to have to commit to that center. Some of them will have to leave and go to an adult center. And these are for crimes that they may have done, you know, something happened, something snapped and maybe they were 14 or 15 when that happened. And so some of them are in for six, seven, eight years. So it's just with no real discretion, especially if it's a measure 11 crime. So, so it, just, it just really brought that home to me because one doesn't normally think about this issue very much, but just seeing it firsthand. And, but I, I was just impressed with their programs and what they're able to do to help uh, turn those behaviors around. So very committed staff. Wonderful. Commissioner Bernard? Just, just one little thing. Uh, um, we, all, we, we went with one of our uh, case workers, case managers, and uh, she ran into a person that she had worked with, uh, and he told her that he was thankful that they put him in jail because it could break, break that cycle. So, I mean, that's a tough, you know, there's, there's a tough decision to make, and, uh, and, and this kid was thankful. And, and oftentimes, uh, even my short uh, time in this uh, in this business, uh, breaking that cycle is what's important. And for the one kid, uh, that cycle was broken. For the other kid, who I knew, uh, his, his cycle of uh, gangs and his grandmother was a gang leader. Uh, if you can imagine that, 
it bro it, this is an opportunity to break that cycle but when they get out if they go right back into that house uh have we broken the cycle i i don't think we have we have to find an alternative uh way to address these family issues and i know that's not our issue we can't fix everything but that's actually what we do in this county is try to help those most vulnerable. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on that note, there is actually a new program that Health Housing, and Humani um, Health Housing and Human Services is launching to try to make sure that we help vulnerable people um, get healthful food at a cost they can afford and also um, live in an active way to sort of stave off, make sure they don't come down with with life-threatening sicknesses. And that is a program of small grants that are gonna be available to community organizations, neighborhood organizations, faith-based organizations to start projects that will give people access to low-cost, healthful food like community gardens. So our website uh, has, I believe, the link to this program. It's um, called it's called uh, the Roadmap to Healthy Communities Program, and grants are available up to about $2,500 in size. You can go online to our website and identify the, the filing date. It is sometime around the end of this calendar year, I believe, and it's going to be a great resource, so please take a look at that. If you or your community group is trying to convert um, an open space somewhere in your area to a community garden or has some other idea for how you can promote uh, access to healthful food at a low cost and also healthy living. Um, so, so we do care a lot about meeting people's basic needs and that's one expression of it. Another expression of it is that we're working hard to help private business uh, get going again and one step that we took on Tuesday was give direction to our staff to um, help some of the builders in our community whose projects have stalled out taken much longer than they expected the projects to take because of um, lack of access to financing and this tough economy. And so the step that we took was ask our staff to waive, actually to give um, waivers of permit renewal fees to builders whose permits had expired in the last two years if on review again, the, the permits are satisfactory and the project can go forward consistent with now applicable law. So we are trying to be, uh, strong partners to our business community. We know that when projects go forward, um, everyone in our community benefits. And uh, so in a responsible way, we're trying to take those steps. And that's something that we did just recently. So important progress. Does anyone have any follow-up comments? Okay, well, thank you all for coming and have a great week. The meeting is adjourned. All right.